You are watching Cold Fusion TV. Hi, welcome to another Cold Fusion video. In the world today, there's a growing shift towards renewable energy such as solar and wind. Because of this shift, there needs to be a way to store the energy received to be released later when the sun isn't shining or the wind isn't blowing. On this channel, we've already covered Tesla's grand energy storage plans for their utility battery power pack systems. So far, they successfully powered Kauai, an island on Hawaii, using solar energy and battery storage systems. Tesla are also installing systems in South Australia to sort out their power troubles, and more Tesla power packs are set to be installed in New South Wales as well. These solutions are all based on lithium iron technology. In just the previous episode, we've seen how the underlying technologies of lithium iron batteries are improving. The charging speed is drastically increasing, along with the long term cycle battery life. The same is true for energy density. In addition, on a utility scale, battery technology does have the distinct advantage of a rapid install time and a rapid response time to energy fluctuation needs. But despite all of this, when it comes to the application of utility energy storage, there are still some questions, namely the long-term cost and the real long-term battery cycle life in terms of current generation batteries. As you'll soon see, there's another energy storage method that's a pretty interesting take on the problem at hand. It involves the storage and release of energy using mountains as natural pressure vessels. This method, achieved by the company Alakais, promises relatively low cost and high efficiency. In this video, we'll take a look. As a side point, this isn't a sponsored video and I wasn't paid for any of this. I just like to search out innovation that I think is interesting. So let's get into it. In a nutshell, energy storage solutions like Alakais is planning to do are an attempt to smooth out the fluctuations in electricity production due to the nature of renewable energy. I had the privilege of meeting Giv Zanginer, the man in charge of this project, while I was in Switzerland. I've invited him to talk about his technology and how it fits into the current backdrop of energy needs. Unfortunately for this interview, the sound on my side wasn't working, but there's still a lot of valuable information here. My name is Giv Zangene and I'm the Managing Director of Alakais, uh, which is a company based in Switzerland aimed to develop a new kind of storage technology. Uh, so electricity storage technology that is um, aimed at storing large amounts of uh, energy. So you basically when you have a lot of uh, renewable energy in the mix in, in, in your electricity grid, due to the intermittency of these sources, which means unpredictability, so you don't know when the sun is exactly going to shine, how much, how much the wind is going to blow. So when you have a lot of these kind of sources in the energy mix, uh, you want to have a way to compensate these fluctuations. Um, and the storage technology that we're working on is, is a method that can, with uh, low costs and, and uh, relatively high efficiency, um, be one of these uh, key components for a grid that is run on renewable energies. So how does it work? Basically, the system uses excess energy from the grid to pump pressurized air into a cavity within a mountain. The air is then cooled down using specialized technology called thermal energy storage and then stored within the pressure cavity. When it's time to generate electricity, this air is then heated up again and pushed out to run a turbine that produces electricity. With this system, Alakais claim over 72% round trip efficiency. In our interview, Give mentions that although geology has to be taken into account, the markets that would be suited for this technology include the continent of Europe, America, Canada, but especially India and China. For those last two markets, looking at recent trends, it's not hard to see why they would be a fit. These two countries have had very aggressive goals in providing renewable energy to help run their country's infrastructure. To give you an idea, by 2027, India is aiming for 60% of its energy to be provided by sources outside of fossil fuels. Meanwhile, in China, they've decreased their coal usage by 5% year over year and have just overtaken the United States as a leader in renewable energy. And with populations of about 1.3 billion apiece, that's a huge market for electricity storage solutions for renewable energy. Maybe just to say why we need the mountain is um, uh, you need a container basically to, to, store, a pressure, to store pressure right there. Um, you probably know like even from uh, small 
gas containers uh, that you use for, I don't know, doing picnic or providing the gas for, 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 for uh, cooking. Uh, this is a small container that has a pressurized gas in it. However, if you want, if it's a small container, it's relatively easy and cheap to do. But if you want to have a very large container, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of cubic meter of, of air, um, it is unpayable to make a steel steel uh, container to, to hold that or any other kind of container. So basically that's why we want to exploit the uh, geology and then the weight of the mountains, the weight of the earth to contain contain this earth, the, the air. In 2016, the company completed their first pilot plant. Located in the Swiss Alps, the plant is the shape of a 120 meter long and 5 meter diameter tunnel with an energy capacity of 1 megawatt hour. The Swiss Federal Office of Energy financed 40% of the cost of the plant as they could see a benefit to the country from this kind of technology. Give states that economically, mechanical storage that uses compressed air is still cheaper than batteries. The tools for machinery have been around for a long time, and right now, the technology is at a factor of four to six times less than batteries on a per kilowatt hour scale. However, the falling cost of batteries are a risk, and the company would be keeping an eye on that. On the sustainability part, um, there's a couple of interesting studies that look at uh, actually how much energy you can store in a storage device compared to how much energy was used to create that storage device. So actually for batteries lithium-ion, you can now store 10 times the amount of energy that you use to make the battery during the whole lifetime of it. And with compressed air, it's 250 times. So there's a huge difference. Um, and something that needs to be kept in mind if you want to have a, a general grid that is um, sustainable also in the long term. Otherwise, if you have to every 10 times that you use the energy to create it, you need to change it. You can, you can, you can think about it will um, also have ecological problems or, or, or sustainability problems. Yeah, well, actually it has been used before. So there is two plants already running in the world. Uh, one of them is in Germany, it was built in 79 even. And the other one is in, is in uh, USA, in Alabama, it was built in 91. Um, both of them use salt caverns on the ground, so you basically dig on the ground, there's big salt formations um, and they compress the air there. There's two problems with that. Um, one of them is that, which I didn't mention before, which was quite important, is when you compress the air, it naturally heats up. It's a physical phenomenon. Maybe if you have experience with a bicycle pump, when you, when you, heat, when you pump the tire, it, you, you feel that the pump is warming up. So this is, happens at a much um, <clears throat> stronger extent when you're working with higher pressures uh, and this heat needs to be needs to be also kind of stored because it can be up to 60 percent of the energy that you use to compress the air um, and these plants that exist don't use this energy don't use this energy don't use the heat um, they they just discard it and then when they need to expand the air again to produce electricity they use gas uh, burners so it has goes with producing co2 it goes with the reduction in efficiency and so on and so forth and the reason for that is that at the time there were not machines who were able to also kind of um, store this heat or resist the heat that is produced during the compression. So they were cooled down to, to kind of protect the machines. And this has now changed. So the machinery, tour machinery is available that you can use to compress at the same time also use the heat uh, that is, that is um, being created. Um, and we, what we do is we have then one component inside of our cavern, which is called the thermal storage, which then stores all of this heat and gives it back to the air when we are going to expand it. Um, and like this, uh, you don't need the gas burning anymore. So we don't have the CO2 emissions and we have much higher efficiencies and we have lower costs. Um, and this has also come true partially due to technological development in the, in the, in the last decades. Let's talk about costs. So according to GIVE, it costs about 100 million to 200 million US dollars for about 200 to 500 megawatt hours output. But the larger the scale of the project, the more it makes sense and it becomes more value for money. This kind of technology isn't really something that a small startup or a set of consultants can tackle. Alakaias are targeting big institutions as partners for new projects. So I guess that's about it. 
So I want to thank Give for coming on Cold Fusion and talking with us. And I also want to thank you for paying attention and watching through the whole video. I hope you learned something interesting. And in a wider kind of way, it kind of shows that you can't really just throw renewable energy out the window saying that it's not going to work. There are a lot of people working on different ways to make the technology more feasible right now, today. So anyway, thanks for watching. This has been Dagogo. You've been watching Cold Fusion. If you just stumbled across this channel, feel free to subscribe. Cheers guys, and I'll see you again soon for the next video. Have a good one.